Welcome to the North Carolina Wesleyan College Writing Center. When incorporating others' work and ideas into your own writing, you will likely use one of three methods, quoting, paraphrasing, or summarizing. Knowing when and how to use these methods correctly improves your work and helps you avoid plagiarism. The method you choose will depend on the significance and amount of information you want to use. Remember the most important rule of using any source. If you use a source, give credit. How you give credit depends on the citation style you're using, whether it's MLA, APA, CSE, or another citation style. The most common methods are including the author or source in the sentence, adding a parenthetical citation to the end of the sentence, or creating a footnote or endnote. You can find citation quick guides for MLA, APA, and CSE on our website. The first way to use a source is quoting. Quoting involves using the exact words and punctuation from a source. You should quote a source in the following situations. When the specific language used is particularly important or striking, when the language is already concise, when a key concept is explained, when it provides strong evidence for a point you want to make, or when you want to avoid accusations of bias or misrepresentation. To quote, you need to make sure that you use the author's exact words and punctuation and that you put that quoted material into quotation marks. Quotes tend to be short, anywhere from a word or phrase to just a few sentences. To incorporate a quote into your paper, you have a few options. You can introduce it using a signal phrase, a few words that introduce the source. You can also work a few quoted words or phrases into your own sentence. If you choose to do the latter, make sure you correctly convey the meaning of the quoted material. Another way to use your sources is to paraphrase them. Paraphrasing involves rewording a small section of a source, usually a sentence or paragraph, into your own language. You should paraphrase a source in the following situations. When you want to be more concise than the original, when the language is too confusing or technical for your audience, or when you want to demonstrate your understanding of the concept and ideas. The key to paraphrasing well is making sure that you understand the section you are paraphrasing and do not look at it as you write. This will ensure that you put the information into your own words and do not just replace a few words with synonyms. Check that your paraphrase maintains the meaning conveyed in the original language. Let's look at an example. Here's the original quote from the source. Friendship is born at the moment when one person says to another, what, you too? I thought I was the only one. An unsuccessful paraphrase would look something like this. Camaraderie begins when a person says, huh, you too? I didn't know there were others. This paraphrase is unsuccessful because it incorporates words from the original and keeps its grammatical and conceptual structures. A successful paraphrase might look something like this. C.S. Lewis believed friendship begins after a surprise revelation that someone else is like us. There is no direct correlation between the language, but the meaning is still there. A final way to use your sources is to summarize them. Summarizing involves explaining the major ideas of a source in your own language. You should summarize in the following situations. When you want to provide basic contextual information, when the original is too long or wordy to include as a quote, and when you want to reference a source that is not the focus of your writing. Summary, like paraphrase, requires translating the author's or the source's ideas and concepts into your own words, so it's important to first carefully read and understand the source. Do not look at the source as you summarize, so you're not tempted to include its language. Check to make sure that you have faithfully conveyed the meaning of the original. A summary can be several sentences, or even paragraphs long, depending on the importance of the information. Let's look at an example. Pretend you're writing a literature paper on imagery in the works of C.S. Lewis, and you want to make sure your audience understands the plot of one of his most famous works, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. You might include a paragraph summary that looks something like this. 
This summary does not include any direct wording from the source, but now your reader has a frame of reference for your discussion. A final important note. This is your paper. Yours should be the main voice your reader hears. When you use sources, you should always provide your own ideas, interpretations, and explanations. Remember, your professors want to see that you have thought through the information you collected and can use them as starting points for your own arguments. They are more interested in what you have to say than they are in your ability to repeat what you found. Thanks for watching. A companion handout on using sources, quoting, paraphrasing, and summarizing can be found on our website. If you have any questions about this or any other writing topic, please visit us in the Writing Center. We're located in the Pearsall Library, Room 146. Face-to-face -face and online appointments can be made at ncwc.mywconline.com. We look forward to working with you.